Hello everyone, my name's Josh. I'm a mastering engineer at Viking Lounge Mastering and in this video, we're going to discuss the problem with learning mixing and mastering online and how you can more effectively learn mixing and mastering online. So you wanna get better at mixing and mastering, you do a quick online search and then bam, you're completely overloaded with a thousand videos on every topic. Now don't get me wrong, the internet is obviously great for finding a quick answer to something objective. For example, how to make a new track in Logic. Easy. However, subjective answers are a little bit harder to discern what's right and wrong because they involve opinion, e.g. how to mix vocals. Every person and their dog has an opinion on this. So how do you know who's actually telling the truth? Pretty much everyone is completely wrong except me. <laughs> so for real, I think there's three main problems with learning about mixing and mastering online. Number one, misleading and false information. I'd estimate that the vast majority of information out there on YouTube, TikTok and Instagram about mixing and mastering is probably wrong. There's a lot of people telling you what you want to hear and not what you need to hear. There are a handful of good people as well, like don't get me wrong, I'm not just like the saving grace of whole audio YouTube. But you should be very skeptical if someone's saying a secret trick that you need to know or a vocal preset that I use on every mix or here's the bestest and newest plugin that you need to have right now. Here's the affiliate link, get a 50% discount, go buy it now, otherwise I'll come to your house. But yeah, this is kind of when alarm bells should start ringing. Oh, Obviously, if someone says they'll come to your house, but usually the more helpful content creators will structure their videos in a way to say, if your instrument sounds like this, then try out this technique. This kind of non-definitive language is Josh approved. Talking about myself in the third person now. Now, if you do see a video with some kind of trick or some kind of technique and they're saying always use this, there's probably no harm in trying it out, but just remember to like listen skeptically and make sure it's actually improving your track and it's what your track needs. If you have a shitty sounding mix, then putting a sausage fattener after your reverb just ain't it. A few extra points that I wanna say while we're on the topic of misinformation. The best engineers that I know and have worked with have a handful of go-to techniques and they know exactly when to use them and when not to use them. This is actually a key point if you wanna become better at mixing and mastering, the skill to know when not to do something. We've all been there when we've chucked a thousand plugins on a mix because we're just thinking that's just gonna make it better and better and better. You might be doing that right now. I mean, we have to make mistakes to be able to improve. We learn that that's not the right way to do things. We need to listen first and then decide what to do. But yeah, there's a real art form and skill into knowing when to do something and when not to do something. Also, another point, the number of followers someone has does not correlate to the quality of information. Sometimes there can be people out there with hundreds of thousands of followers and they're just kind of telling you what you want to hear. Again, with all those kind of fancy tricks and enticing things that get you to click on their video and they just, you know, and pretty much they're just telling you something that you want to hear, like some very specific trick with expanding the low end or something will barely apply to most songs. And just the final thing to wrap up this point number one of misinformation, be open-minded yet skeptical when you're consuming mixing and mastering content online, including my videos. Point number two in the problem with learning about mixing and mastering online is information overload and consuming more than you need to instead of practicing. By far, practicing is the best way that you can get better at mixing and mastering. Even 12 years into my audio journey, I still feel myself getting better with every single project that I do. So you can consume as much content as you want. If you're not putting it into practice, then you're not actually getting better. This might be a very niche example, but if you're into chess and you watch Magnus and Hikaru play a game of Blitz and you can kind of understand the tactical ideas that are going on, and then you jump into a game of Blitz and blunder your queen in move five. So basically all I'm saying is, if you're watching pros do something, that does not necessarily make you better at that thing straight away. You need to put it into practice. Practice is an absolutely essential part in getting better at mixing and mastering because it's how you turn the information that you learn into something that's actually useful. Finally, point number three in the problem with learning mixing and mastering online, and that is non-linear learning. 
stick with me. There are basically infinite mixing and mastering techniques that exist online and therefore there's infinite videos on mixing and mastering techniques online. And because of this, this gives new people coming into the audio space the chance to skip around between beginner to advanced to intermediate to something you'll never use to really bad information. There's no linear progression towards their learning. And usually they're more enticed to, to kind of fancier tricks and like weirder things that the pros don't want you to know about. And as a mastering engineer who gets sent a lot of mixes from varying abilities of mix engineers, I can hear this in some mixes. Like for example, there might be a mix that's absolutely drenched in reverb and slammed with compression, although you can't even hear that there's a correct like fader balance or panning balance. When I studied audio engineering, the course was developed to teach you from the ground up. And this is why I'm a massive fan of audio school, online courses, or working with a pro or mentor because they give you a great foundation that you can build upon. And pretty much the stronger the foundation, the higher you can build. Cool, that's it for the video. They're my three problems with learning, mixing and mastering online. One, misleading and false information. Two, information overload instead of practicing and three, non-linear learning. I'll be curious what you think of this video. If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, don't let me know. If you wanna check out some of my work, you can head to my website, joshbartellmastering.com. There's a contact form at the bottom if you're interested in working together. Otherwise, thank you for making it to the end of this video and remember to use your ears. I'll see you in the next one.